Okay. Jack, can you, can I be heard? I believe so. I can hear you. Okay, yes. good. Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to speak before the committee today. I am here to support Representative Glenn's bill, H.R. 4220. Regarding my background, I am a retired Ph.D. researcher who has studied the effects of microwaves, like the radio frequencies emitted by smart meters, on brain tissue. Leveraging my proficient computer and statistical skills, I later focused my career on advanced technology and data analysis and mining. I've held uh, senior positions both in academia and in the corporate world, and I've been a management consultant and done work for the Department of Energy and had security clearance granting access to nuclear weapons facilities. Lastly, I've been a participant in several cases before the Michigan Public Service Commission and believe I can speak to both the biomedical and technological aspects of smart meters. I'd like to address the issue of cost recovery as it pertains to DTE's opt-out fees. First, in MPSC case U17053, DE, DTE testified under oath there is no distinction between an AMI smart meter with its transmitter disabled and an analog meter. And under oath, they also acknowledged there is no mandate in Michigan law that requires the AMI meter to be installed. Incidentally, I sent copies or had copies distributed to the committee members and all the references are, are in there so you can, you can check the authenticity of my claims. In DTE's punitive opt-out plan, customers have to pay an extra charge and yet are saddled with the very meter they are trying to avoid. A smart meter still has electronic characteristics that are disruptive to electromagnet electromagnetic sensitive individuals, even with the transmitter off. Allowing the customer to retain their current analog meter actually saves the expense of the new meter as well as the labor cost to install it. Allowing homeowners to report their own meter readings like we did years ago, perhaps qualified by credit worthiness and occasional audit and secured with a cash deposit or credit card, saves much of the meter reader cost. DTE is quick to pass incurred expenses along to a special class of customers, but when there's opportunity to have those same customers save DTE money by not requiring the cost of a new meter, DTE defers. Apparently, DTE picks and chooses when to absorb various business expenses. Also note that U17053 established a projected customer opt-out rate of a meager two-tenths of one percent. Many businesses in a competitive environment absorb such minor expenses as a cost of doing business, especially companies that place a high value on customer satisfaction. But DTE does not operate in a competitive environment and does not fear losing customers. And where is the concern for DTE's added expense resulting from additional highly paid cybersecurity staff necessary to protect those computerized smart meters? And why should opt-outers share that cost burden? And what are the replacement costs for the considerably shorter lifespan of an AMI meter? And what of apartment and condominium residents with RF RF sensitivities and other medical conditions who live close to a large cluster of smart meters. Turning off one transmitter of, say, 36 AMI meters will do litter, little to alter their exposure to RF. For them, opt-out fees represent payment for our worthless service. In a case contesting the MPSC's past opt-out decision, Judge Peter O'Connell of the Michigan Court of Appeals stated, quote, the opt-outers receive no benefit from the AMI smart meter program and must actually pay to be excluded from it. But the opt-outer must also share in the cost of the program because of the increase to the base rate. I cannot discern the reason to penalize those individuals that choose not to be associated with the AMI program. And there are others who share this view, including Attorney General Bill Schutte, quoting him, customers will be required to pay rates covering both the costs of the smart meter program and incremental costs of retaining traditional meters, an opt-out program that requires customers to pay an unwarranted economic penalty for doing so does not afford customers a meaningful choice. And utility companies' comments suggest they intend to effectively penalize customers who choose to opt out. And in the MPSC rate case, when asked if, Mr. Meltzer, quote, Mr. Meltzer, that last paragraph you read were the words of Attorney General Schutte? Yes, sir. Okay, just want to make sure. And Thank I you. I have the citation there in uh, the printout. Thank you. 
And in the MPSC rate case, when asked if, quote, the cost impacts associated with the AMI investment, property taxes, depreciation, et cetera, are charged across the board to all rate payers, whether or not they are opt-out customers, unquote, DTE's AMI manager answered yes. And the testimony of DTE's Director of Tax Operations also confirmed this expense was shared by all ratepayers alike. Again, we see that utility companies' uh, cost focus is quite arbitrary, suggesting a self-serving and punitive motive. So in conclusion, we turn to our legislators to provide the relief in this matter that has only been met with indifference at the MPSC despite numerous complaints and now 49 municipal resolutions. We simply want to exercise our freedom of choice regarding the technology that is placed on our property. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Meltzer. Any questions? Okay.